Howdy Tinker Nerds, this is the comment show for my what is a processor video. Click here if you haven't... Wait, where did it go? This is what I think is wrong. This is also wrong. Just plain wrong. What you said about bits is wrong. This is simply wrong. I seem to be going in a direction with my videos that I probably shouldn't be headed, trying to offer simple explanations of technology to hardcore tech enthusiasts. Using wrong terminology and the oversimplification of processor components definitely angered a few people, and they definitely let me know about it. So I have taken down the video, and I'll explain more about that towards the end of this video, but for the record, let's take a look at the errors that I should clarify. The CPU has four primary functions, fetch, decode, execute, and write back. These instructions are known as a processor's instruction cycle. Now in a simple CPU, these are executed sequentially, but depending on the CPU's architecture, most modern ones, however, use pipelining, which allows these tasks to be run concurrently. So while not wrong, definitely not the norm. Man, the CPU has to decode the language, which can be a computer programming language, into machine code, which is binary ones and zeros. The decode step doesn't decode into machine code, like I say in the video. It decodes the machine code into microcode. So I should have said microcode instead of machine code. Regardless, it converts the code into an action, which was the main point. The amount of instructions a CPU can execute each second is called its clock speed, and it's measured in hertz. For those of you that said that this is not clock speed, this is instructions per second or flops, that is also incorrect, because those two terminologies are the instructions per cycle times the clock speed. So technically, I should have said that this is instructions per cycle, but in the early basic processors, instructions per cycle was the clock speed. Each instruction can be around 8 bits long on average, so an 8-bit processor can work on one instruction at a time, while a 64-bit processor can work on 8. That statement may or may not be true depending on the CPU's architecture. Okay, now that all that's cleared up, let's agree to never speak of it again, shall we? On to the next comment. That is a lot of swoosh sound. To be honest, I'm having a really difficult time finding the right sound effect for the up and down cardboard motion. So if you guys have any suggestions for potential sound effects, I'll definitely be open to them. So let me know in the comments below. I have an order from Illuminati to show my comment in the comment show. Is such a thing even possible? Yes, it is. I also had a few feedback comments that really meant a lot to me, and it led to my first ever video comment that expressed the same concern. Now, I understand as a YouTuber the direction that you need to go to grow and expand your channel, but I want to know why you're choosing the way you are into a more of an informative video series instead of like sticking with the how to. All right, so here's the deal. I love two things, tinkering around with technology and motion graphics, but it's hard to combine the two since DIY videos are mainly live action. That's why I separated them into two separate videos, the animation ones being the educational videos, and then on my separate channel, the DIY videos, which were all live action. Also, there's the fact that it's really difficult to get one DIY project done per week or even every two weeks. So then what videos do I upload in the meantime while I'm waiting to finish the project? I decided to go with comment videos and educational videos. But obviously the educational ones aren't working as well as I'd like. So here's what I propose. I'm gonna go back to doing the do-it-yourself projects and I'm gonna try to animate them using my animation style. And then I'm just gonna upload them when they're done. It may be three weeks, maybe four weeks, I don't know. But rushing to put up a video without letting you guys pre-screen them first just isn't working. So my next video is going to be creating a CNC machine out of CD-ROM drives. And I'm working on it right now on the table behind me. So I'm going to upload that when it's done, and I want your feedback. I want you to tell me what you think, if you like that better than the other videos, and if you think I should continue doing that, or go back to this kind of mixed style. Your feedback is really important and I really do listen to you guys. So please feel free to leave it. Also, don't forget about the Tinkernut Instructables Raspberry Pi contest going on for a few more weeks. Get your projects in for a chance to win one of 29 possible prizes. All right, guys, thanks very much for all the comments and for more, go to tinkernut.com.